We want to get started with our panel of inclusion, driving global impact, lessons for all. Our moderator is Micah Gill with presenters Inhao Lee and Adi Abil. Let's give them a round of applause. Summit is all about uh, bringing and connecting women entrepreneurs from Silicon Valley, Latin America, Europe and Africa to create a new ecosystem. The whole experience has been a success. So I came from San Francisco and I've delivered two presentations today. I gave one which was talking about emerging tech trends, so worldwide things like blockchain, VR, AI. The best event uh, for anyone is just thinking of um, to be an entrepreneur. They give us, they gave us a, a lot of tips and uh, suggestions. The way I would summarize the whole experience was inspirational. A lot of the talks were really, really inspiring. Amazing to see what people are doing here in Gran Canaria. So through this tech summit, we've been able to meet different kinds of stakeholders. We've met entrepreneurs. They felt empowered to start a business that was going to impact their community based on a problem that they faced. We've met people who already have sophisticated business, people who are working in corporates and thinking about becoming entrepreneurs. We are just uh, launching, thanks to this experience, the Eroica Association, which is an association that tries to empower girls and women around the world to uh, focus on entrepreneurship and to help each other. Join us because this is the only venue where you can discover, connect and collaborate with an international community that actually cares about what you want to do. Everyone, my experience at the Gran Canaria Summit was incredible this year in 2018, so I hope that you will come back with me in future years. Gran Canaria is doing great things in terms of entrepreneurship. I encourage you to come out and see what people are doing. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Micah Hill, and I'm the founder of the San Francisco International Women Entrepreneurs Forum, but I'm also the founder of Heroica. And Heroica is actually, at Heroica we are building a global community uh, that connects talent to female-led projects. And that's why we wanted to start um, this um, panel with this video. Um, this year we've been extremely lucky to meet amazing women, and of course, I'm always stalking amazing women that I meet, I'm bumping into them, and today <laughs> I have Adi Avili from Angel Hack, and actually Ann Howley from um, a Female Founders of School. And we're gonna be talking about um, inclusion um, driving global impact because you don't know it yet, but we have plans for all of you. So um, we're gonna start talking a little bit about recognizing the connection between innovation and diversity and inclusion. And also how this shift in global understanding of diversity and inclusion is happening around the world. And I'm gonna start with, with Adi regarding these two topics. What have you seen lately? Because I know that you've been in London, you've been in Africa, you are, very well aware of what other ecosystems are doing. Yeah, um, so hi everyone, my name's Adi. Uh, I am the Managing Director of the Accelerator Department at Angel Hack. So I am lucky enough to get to see a lot of different startups all over the world and start to understand really how diversity is playing a role um, in how startups are developing and how ecosystems are developing. And you know, in my time in, in the last five years in this space, what I've really seen is that diversity is starting to mean a lot of things to a lot of different people. Um, you know, Traditionally, when we think about diversity and inclusion, it was, it was kind of a buzzword and it was very almost black and white in a way. Um, but now we're really starting to see it unpacked in a way where diversity Diversity is being explored in terms of diversity of thought. You're thinking about it in, t in terms of skill sets. You're thinking about it in terms of teams um, and the makeup. So, so really it's about like how deep diversity is, is going and how that's really relating to innovation. Um, innovation is, is one of those words that you know, everybody's using. And again, it has a very different context to, to a lot of different people. Um, but what we're really talking about is the ability to be able to 
to take the resources that you have right now, um, understand how you can make it better and how you can make your industry better. Um, and having that from a wealth of different perspectives is really important. Um, and people are really starting to see that. And, it, and it's, a, it's a fact, you know, there's so much out there now that's saying the benefits of diversity um, in terms of what it, in terms of the impact that it has on, on the workforce, in terms of what it has in your startup. Um, and I think globally that shift is just being understood. Great. And how, what is your experience at the Female Founders School with diversity and inclusion? Yeah, I mean, I think, oh, sorry, that was a little bit loud. <laughs> like, um, so at Female Founders School, we help a uh, very early stage, idea stage founders really validate their idea and build the foundation of their business. And for us, the reason why we wanted to do this was because we saw such a connection between diversity, inclusion, and innovation. And that was because if you don't have a diversity of people, contributing to this, people are not gonna be solving and seeing the same problems. Like we all experience life in a very different perspective and, and like empathy is important, but it's so hard for us to really wanna dedicate our lives to take this leap to become a founder unless we are truly feeling it. And this is something that we see with female founders in particular, uh, is that like the, the problems that we experience aren't necessarily being solved. and. Uh, and same to the same degree to a lot of international immigrant founders, to other underrepresented minority founders, uh, and especially intersectional founders. And so they come to us and tell us, like, this is the problem I'm experiencing out in the workplace. This is the problem I'm experiencing maybe as a new mom. Uh, and no one is solving my problem because no one, because the people out there that I'm working with are uh, like not to ba to bash the allies in the room, but are typically white and male. Uh, and so we need more people to feel empowered uh, to have the tools and the frameworks and the support and the community to be able to take their, their problems and innovate on them. I really think it's the recognition of these problems that are not being seen and not being recognized in a lot of ways in, uh, in a less diverse environment. And I, I think that's the thing that we're seeing in a more globally connected world as well. So. Yeah, that takes us to building inclusive ecosystems. Um, um, of course, uh, uh, we're talking about Gran Canaria in the video because I was born and raised in the Canary Islands in front of Western Sahara. I mean, we still belong to Spain, but uh, it, it is uh, a quite unique ecosystem. Uh, we do every year this summit, and we bring women from Silicon Valley, uh, Latin America, Europe, and Africa. So we're trying to create a new ecosystem and actually provide f uh, new resources for women for free. And I will let you know about our future plans, because we have some. Huh? And uh, um, for sure, when we are trying to look into a building inclusive um, ecosystem, we need to bring women from different backgrounds, diverse um, 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 educational backgrounds as well, and also uh, women with different uh, points of view in, in different matters religion, politics, economics, et cetera. And that's what makes probably our summit so, so interesting. And uh, um, Adi, you've been helping the World Bank with different projects, and you have a lot of experience on, on building inclusive ecosystems. So can you share that with us? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I think the, the key to, uh, the, the biggest takeaway, I guess, I would, I would wanna say with building ecosystems internationally is, is really, being humble about it, right? Um, in the last few years when we've been traveling to, to different regions, to different nations, um, we found that typically it was a lot of people going to a place and, and trying to you know, impart what they know onto that place, right? Which you, you can't do, that's, that's never gonna work. You know, that's not how the world works. And, and again, you know, coming back to the point that people are seeing things and having very different problems. So the first step is really about having the humility to go there and, and understand the environment that you're even in um, before you do anything. Um, and then it's, it's really about, again, taking the resources that are really pertinent to that place um, and understanding what that means. So I, I'll give an example. So we did some work uh, in, in Kenya and I had no idea before going to Kenya that the, the ecosystem of Kenya was lending itself towards uh, a, a charity-based economy, right? Because that's the way that ha it had been set up. And I had no idea that that was what I was wa walking into. And I was looking at it from the perspective of, 
okay, well, um, we're, we're in East Africa right now, and this is what I think would be best for East Africa. And, and I'm thinking to myself, I'm being really forward thinking here because I'm looking at East Africa. And I, I just had no idea, you know, understanding the ecosystem. And really it was about us connecting, okay, the government to, to that and really working on the ground and saying, well, we need to work with local hubs because this is the environment that's in place right now, and this is where they're trying to get to. Um, so that's been... Uh, an eye-opening experience for us going into different ecosystems. And again, I, I think you have to kind of say, you know, it's, it's up to that nation and to that, to that country how they want to even develop, how they even want to innovate, you know, what they want to do. It's, it's for no one else to say. All you can really do is kind of say, well, this is what we've learned and, and maybe it works for you, maybe it doesn't, or these are th the technologies that we have, maybe it works for you and, and maybe it doesn't. And then you, you've just got to be there to help. Uh, that's the way that we've approached it, and, and I think that that's the way that it should be viewed by the world. Uh, for sure. Um, for instance, this year we've been in, in Ecuador. We launched our first summit in Ecuador. We also uh, were in South by Southwest. We were also in, in Mexico running a big pilot. I will tell a little bit more about everything that we were doing over there, trying to create impact, and also in uh, Spain. And I will share my experience with Spain later on for the next uh, question about... Uh, um, use multiple practices and measures. I don't know if you have any experience with the female founders about different pilots, different things that you're trying to create and improve to bring more and to give more support to women and female founders. Yeah, uh, so we take our, we try to eat our own dog food. So we teach founders to be very experimental, uh, to really, you know, learn as fast as they can and uh, with whatever resources they have. And so we started that way. When we first launched, uh, it was just me and my co-founder and I was taking weekly meetings with uh, aspiring female founders on a weekly basis, like 30 minute check-ins. Uh, and then that really evolved to us trying a beta program with 10 founders to begin with. And uh, I would say like, um, and our founders are aware of this, like every single iteration of our program is also an experiment for us. Uh, and uh, like our, we set our own learning, we set our learning goals. Uh, and our goal, uh, for example, in our most recent cohort is about like how can we involve a larger community, especially uh, we have, uh, peer, we put our founders into peer groups, small groups of four to five founders, uh, Micah has experienced this, and it really allows a lot of bonding and sharing, and, and to that degree, actually, your fellow founders who have really been there with you on the journey can really advise you a lot better than potentially even a really experienced mentor who's dropping in for like 20 minutes. Uh, and so, but like creating those groups is really hard to scale, and so we are trying to figure out how to scale. And, um, and then on the other side, in terms of uh, measuring and metrics, uh, uh, we try to teach our founders and ourselves that failure is actually a great metric. So when you invalidate something, the speed at which you can invalidate something, especially in regards to innovation, is a great metric. Because it's really hard when you're a really, really new company. You can't go set a, a customer-driven metric, or you can't go set any revenue numbers. Uh, but you should be holding yourself accountable to learning as quickly as possible onto that is how many things have you invalidated? And we have invalidated many things through our process. So. Um, I just want to share with all of you that uh, we did uh, our experiment was a pilot in Mexico, actually two, two, three weeks ago that we were there in Mexico City. Of course, I, I always uh, bring someone with me, and Adi <laughs> had the opportunity to come to me, come with, with us to Mexico. So basically, we had our first event. We had uh, 548 uh, women register for the event. Um, from those women, 300 registered in the platform in Heroica. And from those 300, uh, 70 registered their projects that are impacting to more than 2 million people right now. And we said, we are so touched about all the impact and everything that they're doing that uh, we were thinking, let's try to provide mentorship to all of them. And that's you know what we're doing now. Uh, we are on our f uh, phase three of the, of the pilot. And um, hey, if anyone wants also to join us in this adventure, I see other familiar faces, please join us and, and let's mentor as well. For us, is, this is a, an education and thing for all of us. Um, the other thing that we have seen with uh, this experiment is that women have this window from six 
months to a year and a half where they struggle a lot to keep doing their initiatives, their businesses, their ideas. And that's why we were thinking that Heroica would be great because they will be, have access to talent and also they will see other women that are doing similar things around the world. Now we have data about what women want to do in different continents, in different countries, which make us in the future go to institutions, governments, and say, hey, sweetie, you are not invested in the right things, you know? And, and this is, that's, that's why in this process, diversity and inclusion is so important. So it makes us move to the next question. Um, we need to ensure that leaders access to institutions, investors, and innovators. How we should do that? I, I definitely want to answer that question, but I'd want to tag on something else to the, to the question before, okay. before I do actually. Um, and it's really a testament to the kind of work that you're doing um, and just to kind of to say that it really does make a difference. Um, you know, coming into, I've been with Angel Hack now for two years. Feels like longer, but it's just been two years. And just even in that time, I've seen three, three cohorts coming into our accelerator program and I manage that portfolio. And you know, this cohort that we're working with right now, we have maybe 10%, if not more, uh, that are solely female-founded teams. And we have never had that before. Um, and it, it, it's working, you know. It's, it's, I'm definitely one of those people that is like, oh, this is such a hard slog. This is not working. I'm not seeing the results. I'm getting very frustrated with this process of trying to, or, to include everybody and keep having that conversation. Um, but then we have a cohort like this where I'm seeing all these female founders doing amazing things. And if it's not solely female founded teams, then it's that they have at least one female founder. And that must be 50% of our portfolio, which I have never seen in the Valley. Um, so it's working. And this is at a real global scale. So don't give up hope in the fight. It, it is working and the results are, are there. I know because she is uh, still mentoring a group of girls from the Canary Islands and, and that they are also really, really brilliant with what they're doing. So thank you for doing that, Addy. <laughs> um, and then the, quest the actual question you asked, <laughs> which I, I cannot remember what that question was. Okay, no problem. Uh, my question is we, we need to ensure that leaders access to institutions, investors, and innovators. From your perspective, to both of you, how do you think that we can make this happen? Yeah, I mean, I th it's such a good question and it's such an important question about, you know, how do you really engage all of the different stakeholders that you need to actually make the difference? Um, and you, you have to almost basically a appeal to them where they want to be appealed to, right? If you're, if you're working with the government, you have to appeal to them and, you know, from that government perspective of, you know, if you have people in entrepreneurship, then it's really going to help your bottom line. It's going to help the economy. It's going to stimulate a lot of growth. You have to yeah, appeal to it from their perspective. Um, and it's, it's definitely one of those things in terms of building ecosystems and really making change that it doesn't work if you don't have everybody involved. Um, so it's really about playing the long game and making sure that you really network and, and have all of those people. Um, corporates are such a huge player in this as well. Um, I, again, for me in the last year, I think I've really understood how important corporates are in all of this, so definitely don't ignore them. Um, and, and the education system, that the education system whatever that is uh, right now, um, also needs to be involved in how it's really bringing up the, the younger people and, and the people that are going to start carrying it forward. Um, but I think it's about appealing, appealing to their hearts and, and maybe to their wallets. And how, how, how's your experience with corporations? Uh, so, yeah, we have some, uh, we're actually developing more experience with companies, but uh, I will actually follow up with what uh, Adi said in terms of aligning incentives. I think Ultimately, at the end of the day, uh, like a lot of people will like a lot of people come to us with very mission-driven companies, and I think that's great because they are very incentivized to do it. But you can't necessarily go to investors with purely mission-driven companies, right? Uh, and I think it is important to understand. Uh, the customer and the problem that you're solving so that you can really align. Because the way that investors think is, you're doing something great, let me be along for the ride. Uh, like, yes, like some of them want to use their money for a good cause, uh, but like it is really on you to show the business potential of your business. Uh, and even if you're a nonprofit, you are still a nonprofit business. Uh, and so I, like, I will just say that I think at least from speaking, like I have more experience speaking to founders uh, from anyone who is uh, thinking about starting a company or who has a company uh, that like, you know, 
I think, by the way, Micah is a prime example, someone who's really good at this, is uh, like really thinking about like aligning incentives and uh, like and showing that like you have stuff figured out that you don't necessarily you're not going to ask people for help, but to show them that like hey, you can ask for advice, and this is where I'm at, and this is what I've learned, and this is what I, like, I might need a little bit more resources in order to learn more and help more people. Um, but rather than saying, like, oh, like, don't you want to go and help these people? Aren't I working for a great cause? Uh, right, and at least, like, uh, from founder side. Uh, and how to speak to investors in particular, I think. Uh, and I think for companies, uh, they're also thinking about their money as investing, uh, outside of maybe thinking about it for marketing reasons. If you have, uh, like, you know, just like, G like a lot of reach in terms of audience, then you can definitely appeal them to them for marketing purposes. But, you know, you just have to realize that it's like, you have to align with the right department at the right company in terms of why you are going to them or what you're going to them with. Uh, I think just like, I think you should never stop being strategic uh, about how you think about this world, even if it is people who care about doing good. Um, recently, we, we were invited, actually one week ago, I was in Spain, and we were invited to the Innovators, Institutions, and Investors um, event that is organized by the U.S. Embassy abroad. And it's actually quite interesting because they're putting different communities, these three different communities together, and, and try to align them uh, to get and, and, and create a bigger impact. I think that we should start doing this as well locally here more often because sometimes there is a disconnection and especially I think that uh, not everyone is aware, not uh, all the investors are so well educated about what's going on and what we are doing. Not all the institutions are aware of truly what we are doing. For instance, my experience is uh, with women entrepreneurs. So we need still to educate them and, and kind of come out of the closet out there and, and show them what, what we are wearing in a, in a sense, no? Which actually uh, bring us, I don't know if you wanted to say something because I saw you really excited with the mic. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I, I was going to t touch on what you said that you know, no, no one has it figured out, right? Everybody's kind of fumbling around in the dark right now. Um, so there's a lot that's there's a lot to play in terms of education on both sides, right? So education on the side of, of startups, education on the sides of innovators, just everybody. There's a lot of education and bringing people together and and looking at it as a as a group education um, has been really helpful for us as well when we're working with with corporates and people who really yield a lot of power in in that sense as well. Um, and for me, truly, uh, to learn what all of you and all of them are doing, it makes much easier for me to later connect everyone because we have a better piece of the puzzle. And that's why I want to share with you, in Heroica you will be able to have a better piece of the puzzle by seeing what everyone is working on. And actually you can use that also to interact with other people. Um, which brings us back to um, recognizing the connection between innovation, diversity and inclusion. What are your final thoughts? And if we push it a little bit, maybe they can ask a few questions. <laughs> so uh, my final thought, especially in the connection between the two, is that we believe the world will be a more prosperous place if more women, more international, underrepresented uh, people can actually innovate and create companies. And that is, it. like I think, creating prosperity is what drew people to Silicon Valley in the first place. Uh, and that like rather than have it locked into these, you know, so-called like founder mafias, uh, uh, I think I, we, our goal is to unlock that to a, a larger community and to, especially to women in the world, so. Adi? You know, I think I just, I see it as quite a logical, a logical thing. Um, you know, when I step outside or when I'm just a, a part of this world that we live in, um, everything should be representative, right? Every industry should be representative of what I visually see when I step outside of, of my front door. Um, and, you know, as long as it's not, then it doesn't make sense. And that's where we are in, in startups, where we are in innovation right now. Um, we're moving towards better, but it, uh, that's, you know, what we're pushing for is just to make everything representative and you're just missing opportunities if it's not. There's just a whole host of people that you're missing out on. 
Uh, I, I completely agree. Plus, uh, for, for all of us, it's very important building communities. And to build a community, definitely you need uh, leaders and people that can bring that trust to the communities as well. And I think that uh, both of them are a good example. Of course, me too. And, uh, but um, I, I just want to bring out this uh, call of action. Uh, uh, if it's okay with Wayne and Melinda, we'll be back next year and we will tell you everything that we're doing. And if you, any of you want to collaborate with us and be part of this next year, we'll bring you as well on board and we will present it all together. What do you say? Yes? Thirty people here. We, we'll have our own wine and cheese. Wait, actually, can I just get a show of hands? Uh, so, like, uh, in terms of people in the room, how many of you guys are like ecosystem players or like you know creating? How many of you guys are founders or aspiring founders? Okay, awesome. I just yeah wanted to know who was in the room. <laughs> so. Great. We have one minute. Any questions? So I guess that we have a date for next year, no? <laughs> Please join us, talk to us, come, collaborate. Let's be naughty together. <laughs> Thank you.